Hello everybody. So we are on the grand adventure of the first episodes of Plants, Painting, and Poetry. Basically a guide to how to really use your quarantine in a way that's meaningful and maybe kind of a little strange too. So today we are so fortunate to be here with Mar Aponte, who is a French American artist who lives on the edge of Los Angeles County in the Mojave Desert, the Antelope Valley. Um, she is best known for her work with picote, which is a art form that came out of the 1700s where nuns would literally carve light out from paper. And so she sculpts light, really. And then when she's not sculpting light, she is focusing in on um, art that, that looks at, examines, and questions um, women and nature and the relationship between the two. And so we are very, very fortunate to be here with my dear friend, Mart Aponte. Thank you, Rika. Um, well, hi, Mart. Thank you for letting us come over to your house and do a studio visit. Hi, Rika. This is quite a pleasure. Quite oh. a pleasure. I'm very happy that you are here and then you will ask me very interesting questions. I hope I can answer. Okay. <laughs> you always have... Um, the most amazing stories and just like thoughts and so it's so I feel like your home is such a wonderland like it's just full of creativity and um, we just got done talking about this before we started the interview but like you will do a full house transformation so that different types of art in your art can have a moment to shine and tell a different story so Every time you come to Mart's house, it's like going to a museum where there is a very loving, thoughtful curator who puts so much love and energy into every corner of the house. And then she gives you sweets and tea. <laughs> well, thank you. You're very kind, Nika. It's you know, also it's a pleasure for me to be with you and uh, artwork. I feel very honored. So I think you were asking me before about, uh, because one of my work, I mean, it's just, I have different topics, but one of the topic is uh, women and, and trees. And so I'll tell you a little story, you know, the origin of that. So when I was maybe nine or 10, I was, I'm from France, from the southwestern part of France, not far from Bordeaux, it's a wine region, it's really beautiful. <laughs> I was uh, laying down next to the tree on the grass and all of a sudden I felt like I could feel the earth turning, moving. I could feel that. So it's not really the tree, but it's the tree was there. The tree was there as a witness. The tree was looking at me. I don't know if the tree realized that I was also moving with the earth, but I had this extremely close connection and I, I don't know if I lost consciousness or something, but I remember that I felt like my whole body was surrendering and it was an amazing experience. And I've tried to reproduce that experience in a lot of my artwork. So, yes, so that's, that's uh, the, 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 it's not exactly only the trees, but, but it's that particular connection with the earth and, and of course, and the, and the plants and the grass and the flowers and then and the tree was there like a friend of mine and saying Mark you are safe just you know surrender and you're going to be okay so that's one of the important memory no I, I of course that's a really important I think I at least I hope that everyone at some point in their life ends up with with a relationship with some part of nature like some aspect of it I think that's part of the reason why we're doing this show is to give you permission to lie on the ground and form a relationship with a tree. And um, and this topic is very, very serious. And Mark, not too long ago, just sort of explaining, like, I have a hard time taking things serious sometimes. So, <laughs> so I get a little bit playful with things, but I, I, I think it's because... Um, I think that's one of the ways that you let go is you just like you understand that it's a little bit absurd it's a little bit silly but do you really want to die without having an experience like that like don't you want to lie on the ground and feel yourself absorbed by the world by yes, nature yes. and then form a deep connection with something outside of yourself um that might seem ridiculous but 
it seems even more tragic not to let that happen at yeah, some point. Because when you when you are younger, I think you are more. I, I cannot generalize, of course, but uh, also I was I was born in a place where nature was extremely important. My grandfather would take us to the forest, and he knew all the name of all the plants and everything. And and so I was already conditioned, if I may say, you know, to to certain uh, rapport w with nature, with the earth and then the, the tree. Uh, also, we cannot see it, but I have a house with a huge tree, a huge ficus, so it continues. The tree is with me, that's my best friend. And in the morning when I, I, I just, I wake up immediately, I'm almost blind and when I go, and the first thing I do is to touch the leaves of that tree and to embrace and to say, thank you, my dear friend, for being with me, thank you. And when I'm a little sad, I put my he my head, you know, really deep inside, you know, and I feel all the leaves, you know, branches caressing my face, and I feel, oh my goodness, thank you so much, my good friend. So, you know, it's it is. Well, I feel like what your work does is it it really tackles very very um, difficult subject matter, like the the treatment of women. Like I wouldn't, um, I I mean, I would definitely. I wouldn't pigeonhole your work to be feminist work, but I do think it definitely looks at issues of the feminine and what it is to be female. And I think it pairs it really nicely with the difficulties of what it is to be in a world that's being really like taking a, taken advantage of, you know, for, mm -hmm. for profit and like kind of merging those two stories. But I feel like when I look at your art, I don't, I feel a whimsy, like I feel a love for the little girl that you just described yourself mm -hmm. and her relationship to these things. And so work that's about very dark, difficult subjects, I feel makes me so happy and joyful. Like there's a, there's a dichotomy or there's two things happening in your work simultaneously. So I'm able to approach really difficult subjects, but feel really joyful and happy doing so. And I, I think, I think that's one of the things that I love most about you, and then also your work. Um, so, excuse me, if I if I may add something regarding this symmetry. Symmetry is extremely important in my work. So it creates that when people look at it, they feel it's, it's about serenity because it's so balanced. Uh, it, I always start with the right side, and then. Even if I had an assistant, I would say, okay, now the left side is going to be similar to the right side, except that, except that sometimes I take the, the liberty, you know, say, okay, I'm going to put a letter yellow here, which is now on the other side. So this is, it doesn't mean that all my work is like that, but there is this idea of, because when I had that experience, you know, I felt like uh, a very, very uh, calm and very, uh, I was not even aware that existed. It, it was, I mean, of course, I must have been aware because otherwise I wouldn't, <laughs> yeah. But, but it's, it's about this serenity being uh, like surrendering, as I said. And, and, I, and in my work, in some of my work, not all the work, but some of it, the latest one, you can see, you can see that, that, that symmetry, that balanced. So it's a balanced world where you have uh, also, it's it's uh, the integration of the female body within the tr the, the tree. So I've, it's kind of a, I've, I've imagined this entity, which is very influenced by surrealism, that that you have a, a, a creature that is a half trees and half women, uh, choosing a re the reproductive organs and the breast. It's not everything, it's part of. Them. Of the yeah, so maybe we can look at it then. No, absolutely. I mean, there are a lot of ovary-looking yes. shapes in your work, and <laughs> and there's also um, windows in your work that could that are vaginal in nature. I mean, I I know I know you don't mean to do it. It's yes, just it's yeah. like a centerpiece, right? So, like I I gave you. Uh, I gave you a, a lifnoid plant the other day, and I didn't mean for it to look and feel like balls. <laughs> it's very soft. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, but that was yeah, I, 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 <laughs> I just feel like 
Nature no, is full of things that are a little yes, bit. Yes, because you know it also the sense of touch again. Yeah, we're back. We're back to yeah. our our other favorite subtopic, which is sensuality, right? So, so um, which is not necessarily sexual either. It's yes. just about sort of these yes. organic properties that are all around us. Um, so we're trying very hard to center these episodes on the concept of roots, right? Yes. And so um, your work explores different types of roots. Yes, but also the root of the matter. You know, I started talking about a symbolic root. You know, what's the root of my work? And the root of my work is that amazing experience that I just described a little while ago. That was the root. And, and, and of course, you are... Uh, I mean, I, we can elaborate, we can talk about other type of roots. Uh, I don't know, I mean, I'd like you to ask me some question to help direct a little bit my... Your, your root you know, talk? Of, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> exactly. Get you back to the root of roots? Yes. Um, well, you were doing some research and you were sharing this with me. Like, there, there's two different types of root systems. This is like an image that you printed out. Yeah, yes. Um, so, so, so I don't know if you'd want to talk about yeah, that a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I, I can talk. Okay, so I was talking about uh, two philosophers, uh, Deleuze and Gattari, and they uh, coined the term, uh, they used the term uh, rhizome. Uh, and so a rhizome is, uh, to contrast, what is a root and what is a rhizome? A root is, uh, is, is connected, is, is uh, providing a nutrient for the, for the tree, for the trunk, but it's, it's connected to, to a trunk and, and to one particular element. So from a symbolic perspective, it could be about authority, about the logos, about uh, knowledge. They are not independent. They are completely connected to that. But the rhizome is very different. The rhizome is a stem. For example, the iris. So it's at the same time, it has the roots, but it also had this, uh, this um, stem, and, uh, and we can see it here. So there is a dissemination while the, with the roots, you, you have the roots, but then you have, uh, they all, they all are, are dependent on the, on the trunk. It's just one, one single element of power. It could be, you know, if you look at the term of power. But here you see how they are disseminated. So where is the center? Where is the center? Where is the origin? You know, it's about multiplicity, and it has a lot of political connotation about diversity, you know, identity, and, and about um, uh, multi, um, uh, I can't find the word right now, but uh, anyway, so, so that's why I'm interested in this, in, right. this, in this configuration of different centers, not one, different centers, and all of them are different, but they are connected, but there is not one particular uh, center that's going to condition and are going to govern, are going to, to, um, to um, uh, discipline or, or control or to, all the resources. Control exactly yeah. the resources, or to dis decide what is right and what is wrong, what is correct. There is not one single policy, you know, there's multi. You know. So I'm going to make a plug for our desert. This is how, so we live in the high desert, a place called the Antelope Valley, which is full of Joshua trees and creosotes. And this is how our desert grows smart. So, mm -hmm. so rather than, rather than I, don't, I don't know what to compare it to, maybe the redwood forest, right? Where all of the roots sort of go to a, a one source, one plant. Um, our desert like, is almost like a nerve system, like a very delicate, like interactive nerve system. The, the way that mushrooms grow, you know, like they sort of like, um, proliferation, they proliferate. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And they, they sort they of spread. move out and communicate where everything needs to go, all the life needs to go mm -hmm. in order to survive, right? Mm -hmm. That's why when you're in the desert, you have to walk kind of softly because it's an entire nervous system, which also kind of reminds me of like sensuality, right? Like, I don't, I'm so, like, there's this like this like whole, um, so I think this is so interesting too, like, because um, it goes back to, this is kind of my obsession right now too. So there's tr plants, I'm learning a lot from plants right now, the same way that I learned so much from you and the way that I learned from art. Um, but I'm also learning a lot about family, like roots as far as like, 
It, it gets really complicated because I feel like most families are like this too, right? Like you, you can have a family, extended, extended, extended family, yeah, yeah, even found family, yeah, right? As it starts family. to in, intermingle. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really interesting because your work literally seems to be playing around with like the two different root systems, yes. whether you're aware and of it or not. Maybe we can move and then I'll show you the different representation of those whether we just talk about the arborescent and then the rhizomatic. Yeah, I would love to look at your roots. And but really quickly before we we move on to that, I so this show is plants, painting, art, and poetry. So I just really quickly want to um, ask you to maybe talk a little bit about etymology. We did this. Um, we touched on this a little bit before, but um, with the like the the roots of words, and so I was looking up Derrida in, in some of his like more famous quotes about etymology. So my friend, who is very 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 smart, was watching the footage of Marta Ponce and I talking about Jack Derrida. And my very smart friend is like, I tried to look up der, da, and there is nothing, right? Like, as if, anyway, so not everyone knows who this dude is. The person that really knows who this dude is, is the dude himself who's very into himself, as he should be. Because he's kind of a super genius. I mean, if I was a super genius, I would probably rub my body up against my book collection, too. There's footage of that. There's actual foot. He's like... <laughs> He was like, etymology is misunderstood as the rule when it's really just like this sort of, it's like watching a living organism have a fight with itself, etymology, the meaning of words. And then he also talked about, if I got it right, he talked about how etymology and art have a lot in common because we want to think about language and art as being historical. So it's like it's capturing something from the past when he's like, that's a very dangerous stance to take on that because art doesn't die. Like art is actually in some ways anti-historical. So I don't, I don't, I'm, I need your help because I. Well, I, I, <laughs> you know, you, you have said almost everything. Uh, you said that art is anti-historical. Well, those are my words, not Derrida's. But Derrida um, was just warning that we shouldn't think of art as being something historical, which I, to me, I took to mean uh, uh, art is something that's alive. Be, because I think it has to do, you know, with the idea of of the, the concept of deconstruction. Because deconstruction is something. So, for example, I cannot say somebody asked me, "Can you give me the definition of deconstruction?" I can't do that. Why? Because the definition is set, is something set. And, and uh, it excludes, uh, in order to create meaning, you have to exclude something. You know, for example, uh, the way he talks about difference, uh, la difference, with a spelling error. So in introduce, difference is supposed to be spelled D-I-F-F-E-R-E-N-C, -E -E, and he spelled it D-I-F-F-E-R-A-N-C, on purpose, because uh, to question this idea of how do you construct meaning, you construct meaning is meaningful when you exclude because it has to be logical. So if, if there is some contradiction, then, then it's not going to be acceptable because it won't be, uh, it won't be uh, practical. So you have to cut here and there. So um, the, 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 your question was uh, about uh, art. Uh, yeah, so we, how can we define art? The, the idea of definition is already out. So it's to look at the contradiction. Or for example, let's look at art, what happened in the 16th century, 17th century. But what are the elements that were like the, the idea of genre? In order to say, okay, this is the particular, this is expressionism, or this is impressionism, or this. Yeah, but, but if we look very careful at it, we are going to see that they merge in emerge the impression you know, you have you have elements of 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 the 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 eighteenth century you have you know it's all it, it, it's it's uh, a combination of different things we cannot try to asceticize to try to because we want to make it simple because we want to we want uh, to have a definite answer it's all questioning I remember that the principle was to look the first thing that they asked me when I was studying at UCI 
They say, when you read the text, look at the contradictions. And I said, wow, what is this funny way of reading? Yeah, because uh, everything is in construction. And then, and then you want to include even the element that they've been excluded. So that's why, for example, in the seminar I took about hospitality, the first thing that he did when you know, I told you that the definition of hospitality is, and I mean the etymology of hospitality, say there are two contradictory terms. You have the term, the idea of hostess and the idea of hospice. And so we think that hospitality is when you welcome the other person, but but he said there is violence in that welcome. You know, so uh, go back to the to history. So history, what is history? What well, you have is people who decide what history is, is about. And then they exclude element because otherwise they cannot uh, label, they cannot say, okay, this is the 19th century, this is such a, you know, uh, it, it, that's why it's difficult w w with Derrida. Reading Derrida is very difficult because he wants to all the time, he doesn't want to say, okay, this is the truth. He even wrote a book called The Truth in La Verité en Peinture, The Truth in Painting, you know, there is no truth. It's not true. So, so it, 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 it's it's all the element that have been uh, some of them have been excluded, and and so you you re-territorialize, you reinsert all those elements to create a dynamic. And uh, so I don't know if I answer your question. No, you you really did it. I, I get know. so excited when you talk about things, so I kind of fade off into like, so, I mean, this is oversimplifying it, but basically, in a lot of ways, like art undefines things. So art doesn't define the world, where it just gives us more questions. So yes. we're yeah. able and allowed to undefine yeah. things. Yeah. And I was thinking about my relationship with plants. Like, I love my plants. I too wake up in the morning and say, planty, planty, I love you. I hope you're okay. I too pet my plants, judge all you want. Um, but, but at the same time, like hospitality, right? Like most of my plants come from tropical regions that are full mm -hmm. of humidity and ideal like living circumstances for them. I pay sometimes way too much money to have plants in my home in the desert that these plants never had any like any business being here, right? So sometimes I really feel bad like there's a, a touch of like kind of the colonial in that, right? Like like there's, yes. I'm going to take these plants and they're going to be mine. So what kind of love is that, right? Um, but now that they're mine, I feel really special and happy. But I also feel this obligation to make sure I take care of them be because they can't on their own anymore. And so it's a big question of like, am I a steward or am I inflicting violence upon nature by, by doing these things? And I don't mind living with the question, honestly. Uh, um, you, I think that there is this idea of alienation. I think it's, I uh, can't remember the name of that uh, critical theorist uh, from Eastern Europe, and he, uh, anyway, and he said, whether we like it or not, we are alienated. For example, uh, the, 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 the clothes that we wear, there, there are some people who have been, uh, uh, who are being exploited. And, and, but, but it's kind of catching into situation. If we don't do that, then how about those people, you know? Uh, so the, the exotic plant, uh, okay, so if they, even the idea, the, the terminology, exotic. So exotic, what does it mean? I mean, it means an outsider. And, and so do we have the right to transplant something from a milieu to the other? But, but, but maybe, maybe they are not happy where they are. You know, when we, it's a natural that way they were born and then they were, they, 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 were, they lived, but maybe, maybe right now that place is being uh, uh, corrupted with, uh, I'm thinking about the Amazon, with the fire, with the, the uh, chemical product, everything. So it's their natural milieu, but, but it's, it's better to transplant them maybe for their survival. So it's, it's very, very complicated. Uh, how, what, what is natural? I mean, the concept of natural, what, what, can we justify something saying, okay, even the idea of origin, what, can we find the origin? That's why we were talking before about the rhizome and then the, the uh, arborescent, because the arborescent has an origin, but the, 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 the rhizome or the rhizomatic has several, several groups, several origins, it's not one. So it's, uh, to answer your question about, about the plants, uh, it, it's very complicated because maybe they should not, uh, maybe they are not happy where they are, and, and so we adopt them, 
and then by adopting them uh, we introduce new new way of uh, new lifestyle but maybe it's better for them it's 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 very difficult to know it is very difficult it's very difficult to know and also and also it's something that uh, there is beauty to it so maybe that's a gift of the of those uh, uh, of those exotic plants to to give joy to people but then you could say okay this is an anthropomorphic view because you're talking not about the plant the it plant for the plant's sake but you're talking about people the, 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 owner, of, yeah. the <laughs> owner of the plant so that's that's uh, yeah it's 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 yeah well, so we definitely want to move along to see your work i could literally stay here all night long okay. but i'm kind of jealous of your of your flower glitter in your lap so can we can we flower glitter in our lap before we move on to your studio tour you do whatever you want you want to you could have whatever you want i just want to throw it into my crotch <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh, baby. that's okay yeah, you know. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you, Mart, so much. I'm so grateful for well, for all you, the glitter. Thank you for coming here and, and uh, asking me questions. Of I, course. I love it. Thank you. Well, I love it.